excuse the gloom. OpenMW allows gamers to take the classic RPG on the go with them, playing Morrowind in places once thought impossible. With Daggerfall Unity supplying a modern engine for The Elder Scrolls 2 then, can the same be done for Daggerfall? No, not with Unity anyway. As of the release of this video, there isn't a mobile release of Daggerfall Unity, but you don't need Unity to play DOS games. Via emulation, you can use DOSBox to play the original version of Daggerfall on most Android phones, made even easier via RetroArch. This was the conversation that started over on the Discord, link in the description, which led to a question. If Daggerfall can be played on phones, can it be played on the 2011 flagship handheld console? This is how I got The Elder Scrolls 2 to play in the most cursed way possible. Our story starts when a member over on the Discord started the adventure by installing Daggerfall on his phone. They then graciously tested whether this would be possible on a Vita by using an emulator. After many hours, they had found that it was possible. However, you would not be able to utilize any of the easy loading configuration files that you can normally benefit from with RetroArch. What do I mean by that? Well, look at me install Arena onto the Vita. I take the install files from my PC, drop them into the Vita file system, boot up RetroArch, scan for games, and done. Arena is now there to be played. Daggerfall isn't that easy. So it's back to classic command line instructions to get anything working. That Discord user successfully got the game running, but warned that an overclock would be needed. And so, it was my turn. My PS Vita is already hacked, which was a big help. I use a third-party card converter to allow the Vita to use SD cards for memory instead of their crazy expensive proprietary memory card. As you can see, there are quite a few hacks already installed, including RetroArch. So this should have been easy. Emphasis on should. First, I had to set up all of the folders and place the Daggerfall install files onto the Vita. Next comes the troubleshooting with RetroArch. I've used a hacked Vita for years now and thought myself quite savvy with the hardware, playing PSP games via the Adrenaline emulator and using RetroArch for a myriad of SNES, Game Boy Advance and Genesis games. So how hard could DOS be? Well, loading the core is easy enough. But that's the only easy thing about it. The emulator doesn't detect the game, so it's over to the command line and now what? I was warned of this on Discord, but the issue was finding how to remap the on-screen keyboard. RetroArch setting menus are a bit of a mess in this regard, but I did finally get it, and the touchscreen doesn't work. I tried everything here, turning on the touch setting in RetroArch, playing around with the input settings and remapping. No matter what, I couldn't get the touchscreen to register anything in RetroArch, which is likely more an issue with the Vita than the software. And so this is how I had to type. Key by key, manually picked with the analog stick, which for whatever reason would hang up unless I used both the left and right ones simultaneously. Following the commands on the Discord, I went through the process of installing, only to find that I had misnamed the file system. Okay, I'll admit that uh, a lot of the issues so far are on me. With the file system fixed, I was able to get into the installer and install the game. Now to test the sound card and... <laughs> that is cursed. I try testing a few other options, but nothing fixed the issue, and one of them throws RetroArch, which is where I remember this warning. I need to overclock the system. Is it safe to overclock a decade-old handheld with its original battery? Probably not, but Daggerfall is worth it. Ramping the CPU up to 500 megahertz from 333, I booted back into the installer to check it out and... Oh boy, not a uh, good start. I won't give up here. Let's boot up into the game proper. The game actually started. I figured out how to get the mouse working and excitedly made my way through the class creator. Some kind of issue prevented me from choosing from the class lists, but I wasn't deterred. 400 years after Tiber Septim's reign, the beginning will meet the end and the bloody circle will close at the Empire of Cambria. The movies were great, without any sound issues, thankfully. Into the gameplay. Okay, we're, we're at 60 FPS, apparently. Oh no, that is... Oh, it does not run well. But we got it running, and that's half the fun. Oh 
what this is. Oh wow, that is. Well, if there you go, it's smooth as hell on the map. That's what that's what you want to play. If you just play it like this, then it's fine. So, oh, we do have the Ebony Dagger. Brilliant. Let's put that on. Can't put any armor on. Oh. Well, we do have some decent spells. Nice. Let's get our sword out. Hello? Nope. No sword allowed. There you go. Here we go. <laughs> this is Daggerfall on the PS Vita and it is not playable, unfortunately. So it looks like Android phones will be your only choice. <laughs> this is... Oh... Ouch, that is painful. Well, it was a good experiment. And after all of that, yeah, this isn't playable. I tried and I got so far, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. Even with the unsafe overclock, which claims that the game is running at a silky 70 FPS, this is a slideshow. Maybe 5 FPS if I'm being generous. Without the touchscreen, gameplay would have been a pain anyway, with an overactive joystick input making mouse controls very difficult, not to mention that you would have to shake it wildly to attack. Can you play Daggerfall on a PlayStation Vita then? Technically, yes. Realistically, no. <laughs> Use your phone, or just play the game as it was intended on a PC. Vita Modern is an ever-growing community though, with ports of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas working on the system, and other DOS games like Prince of Persia getting dedicated ports. Just maybe, if the right person has the inclination, we may see Daggerfall getting the love it deserves in the most obscure way possible. What about Arena then? I mentioned earlier that the game was much easier to install, but that's about where the ease ends. Menus are a breeze, but after you get into the game, it's worse than Daggerfall unless you overclock. Even with an overclock enabled, the game is painfully slow and basically unplayable. I even dropped the detail slider and it didn't really help. The game runs at about 3 FPS, but I did kill a goblin, so that's a success. I count that as an absolute win. I do get a silky smooth frame rate in the UI, so if you want to exclusively create a character, then yes, Arena and Daggerfall do work, just don't try and play the game. Thanks for watching, this was a fun little video that I just wanted to experiment with. Have no fear, I am still hard at work on the Arena analysis, which is shaping up to be over 2 hours long and so, so, so much better written and deeper than I ever got with the Daggerfall video. As always, I'll see you in the next one.